Greetings and salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. The last one for 2023. In today's session, we are going to be looking at the, getting the previous row in Power Query. Now, this is a common requirement, and there are many ways to do it. But today's method, it's a little hack method that can be used in specific use cases. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this data set over here. We got a list of employees and specific events during the employee life cycle. And each one of these events started a specific day. So what we want to do is we want to end up with a table like this. We can see this employee, Brett, started, signed his contract on the 5th of July. Okay. And the end date of that was 9. And then he started the next thing on the 10th. That's basically inferred from this table over here. So how will we be doing this? We're going to take the hack is basically as simple as this. So we have the start date. You can see it's a sorted list. And all we're going to do is we're going to take this column and we're going to transpose it down. So this is going to become the end day. So you can see this 5 to 10 July. And then we'll just like this would be less one date. And then the next one would be that. Okay. So that's how we will create this table out of this table over here. Let me show you how to do it. All right. So the first thing we do is we pull this data into Power Query. So we go in and we say data from table or range. Let's just call this solution. So this changed step over here was automatically added. I'm just going to make that start date a date instead of a date sign. All right, key to the solution is the order of the dates per employee. So the first thing we need to do is we need to sort this by employee and the start date. We can just go sort by descending. And you can see it created this code over there. So we can just intercept there and we can add it. If we want to add multiple sort criteria, just go there and we say the column is employee and we want to sort by order ascending cool and we say okay so now we basically have the correct order you can see for this employee the earliest date is the bottom and the latest date is the top next thing we do now that it's sorted is to group it by employees so we go to transform we say group by we say we want to group this by the employee and we want to do uh, all rows and we're just going to call this new column all cool so what happened now is you can see there's first employee and in this little table you can see all of the details for that specific employee in a table all right so now what we need to do is i want to extract those dates because i want to get to the previous rows date i want to remove that last line and the top one i want to insert a null so what we do is we create a new custom column Yes. And we're going to say here, refer to the all table. Yes. And then give us the start date within there. So that's going to give me a list with only the dates from that table over there. Okay. So now we have something to work with. We're going to do all of this magic with lists. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to remove, you can see here, you want to remove that very first event. We're going to go in here. I'm going to say table, remove last n. We're going to say in this table, remove the last one in because it's a sorted list and return the start date. So let's say, OK, so now if you look there, the last the first date in there would be the 10th of July. Look at that. the fifth. So we basically remove that last little row in there with actually the very first event. Next thing we need to do is we need to add a null at the top. So how do we do that? That's literally how we get the previous row. So we say null in curly brackets and there you go and now you can see why it was important for us to have the sort there done first before we did the grouping or the add custom column because this won't work if that wasn't done so now we're going to get fancy and we're going to start converting this into an actual um, kind of like a little function in this we say let we use the power query m query syntax and we say in let's call this very first one the last date yeah, and we say return last day. That would give me exactly the same result there. Okay, so that's just the basis for us continuing with our solution. So what I want to do next is I want to take each of these columns in the table all, and I want to convert these to lists as well. So how do I do that? Let's quickly go back to that last step over there. I'm going to add another step in there. Let's call this one all column table two columns and the input would be that all table yeah 
cool and then let's just in the end return that all columns now you can see we have three lists so that's list one two and three right one two and three i want to add the list from this custom column as well so let's quickly go back there and we say and the last date so now if we look at that we will have this kind of that's not what we want so you can see we actually put the values in there if we go back to this and we encapsulate this in curly brackets you see we'll have four lists that's basically column one two and three and then everything in this column as a list pretty cool so now the next thing i want to do is because i'm going to convert this list into a table i want to get these column headers so what i can do is i'm going to go back in there let's add a step in there let's call this headers I'm going to say table column column names and i want to give all the column names from the old table yes so if we have a little peek at that let's just put that in there this will give me all the column names from there but you can see we want to add the end date as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say here concatenate and i'm just going to put in a list format there the last one would be the end date Cool, so now we'll have four columns. Okay, that's the column we're gonna add. All right, so now we're basically there. So now in the next step, let's just take the all letters there. We now wanna basically take do those four lists and create a table from it. So let, we, we're gonna say here, table from columns, yes. And we're gonna give it that table from the all column list, yes, and luckily, we have the header names. So what is the header names? Headers. Cool. And we're going to return that. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So now you actually have your table that refers to your previous row. Isn't that cool? But you can see the one problem we have here is this end date is exactly the same date as that start date. So we need to make one little change to the custom function over here. So this last date. We're going to say list transform, yeah, and in brackets, we're going to say each, and the function we're going to use is date add days, yeah, to the underscore, because it will refer to every single item in that list, and we want to subtract one day, close that bracket out, close the bracket out, and put a comma in place. So now this, you look at that. So you can see the very first contract was signed on the 5th of July by the 10th of July. So the 9th is the end event. And this one ended on 19th, 20th. So there we go. Pretty cool. So you can see basically everything that we need is basically in this custom table. We don't need these other columns. I'm just going to add another step. Let's say here table combine. And we're just going to say in brackets the custom column, that new column we added. There we go. Pretty cool. Let's just convert this into a date. I want to look at the number of days between this one and that one, add the kind of logic. And for where it's null, we basically want to take that date up to today's date. So let's add a column. Number of days. And we can say duration days. Yes. So end date less start date and close it out. You can see, and we have the null. We can keep it at a null if we wanted to, but my requirement would be this is the number of days between those two days. Let's quickly look at, let's go back here. Let's quickly add some logic. If the end date is not uh, equal to null, then, yeah, that would work else take the duration of days from we're going to say date time fix local now yes but we need to also wrap because that's date time we need to wrap that in make that a date yes uh, less the start date so that would give us a present date the difference between the start date and the present date there we go Pretty, pretty cool. Let's quickly bring it back. There we go. 
I really hope that this video opened your mind to the possibilities of what you can do with this little hack and with all the other cool things you might not have known about Power Query that you can now apply to your own work. Well, BA Sensei signing out.